green, pure, lovely, lots of fresh produce, very clean milk, tastes really fresh. King Island for me is a place where I can do what I want to do and what I feel like comfortable in doing, like the fishing, the walking around the beach or just enjoying the nature. That's what I like. Working for King Island Dairy has given me, uh, I guess, an outlet to be passionate about and it's not hard to find that passion about a, something that means so much to your community. It's almost like the, the actual dairy factory out there, is, it's almost sort of almost iconic because you get to that corner and, and there it is on your left hand side and you drive past it and as the years go on it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and, 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 and better too. It's a very unique environment. It's about 70 kilometres long and 30 kilometres wide, but it's really um, actually quite extreme, different uh, landscapes. So on the west coast, we have a lot of coastal land, and then the centre of the island is quite heavy, um, really good grass growing right across to the east coast. But all the farmers on the island, they, they know how to use their land. So depending on what sort of terrain they've got, they'll have uh, the type of farming that suits that. The diet for most King Island cows is a, is a very good diet. The huge part of their diet is just purely pasture. And that produces a milk that's, that's very rich and untainted and very natural. What we got is King Island with our beautiful, rich, good milk, which is a big head start on most of other places. Well, our milk, I find, tastes really sweet. Our whole family drink it and we really enjoy it. Yeah, and just from the clean environment and, and we try to farm as naturally as we can. Yeah. King Island is a great climate for growing pasture, mainly because of a good rainfall and we don't really suffer badly at all from drought or flood. Roaring 40s is, uh, is a strong wind that blows from the southern ocean up through the 40 degree mark and probably a bit south of it and up into Bass Strait. In sailing ship time, that was the wind they depended on to bring them up into Bass Strait, up the side of King Island, which was uh, disastrous to many of them. 90% of the cheese that leaves the island is sent um, via the boat. Uh, if there is problems with the boat and weather-wise, uh, strong winds in the wrong direction or just rough seas or for any reason the boat doesn't come, uh, then we have a problem with cheese that has to be got to the market that week and so uh, we have to resort to flying it. The fact that we're an island, um, having to freight things in and out is, is quite an, uh, an issue and um, quite a cost, yes. The history of King Island Dairy, like it started in the very early 1900s, but at that time there was a lot of soldier settlements and actually the farms, they had generally just a few cows, they had some pigs. So what they done is actually separated the milk. So the skim milk went actually to the pigs to fatten the pigs up and then the, the cream went to the dairies to actually start making butter. I mean on this property all my life, dairying. My grandfather used to take his cream to the factory on horse and cart. He had a farm just north of Curry. I'm a local here on King Island, so I grew up here. Uh, my grandparents were actually uh, soldier settlers, so after the First and Second World War, King Island was opened up on uh, land settlement schemes, and that's how both sets of my grandparents came to the island. Um, Mum and Dad are, are beef farmers, so I grew up on a beef farm. It's been a great lifestyle, and I think that's why I'm here now, carrying that on. I mean, I have 1,500 people living here, and I've decided to, um, you know, live my life here. And a brand like this is just so important to to what King Island is, and also our future. 
I came to the island at a very young age as uh, a child of a soldier settler uh, family. When I was going to primary school, I would get up early in the morning, um, milk a hundred cows, catch a bus to school, um, milk one more cow when I got to school, which was a headmaster's cow, <laughs> and um, then uh, do your school and uh, get the bus home and then milk another hundred cows after you got home. I think through the 40s and 50s, uh, they start making a curt, and from there it sort of slowly grew. And uh, then in the 80s, they start developing some of the white mold and specialty cheese, which is uh, King Island there is very well known for now. And then in the late 90s, we were able to actually perfect it and uh, sort of got it to a stage where it is well known now. Yeah, so it's had a, quite a a long history of dairying, but uh, I think um, now it's got one of the best brands in the world. Yeah. My granddad was a cheesemaker, and then my dad was a dairy farmer back in Switzerland. And so it was in my blood, and I would have loved to be a dairy farmer, but the farm we were living on went to my older brother because that's the way the system works over there. So the next best thing was uh, cheese making. So I done an apprenticeship as a cheese maker. In Switzerland, all the small villages, they actually have their own little cheese factory. So you actually live with a your cheese master. So you, you make cheese every day, but then twice a week you go to university where you learn the technical stuff or the theory behind all that. But then you go straight back into the factory and actually uh, making it. King Island approached me in 1998, and uh, that's when uh, I went across, and I stayed over there for 10 years. So in these 10 years, that's when I helped developing a lot of the new cheese and sort of uh, a lot of the techniques, how we made it, we changed a little bit just to be able to have a consistent good product all the time. A lot of people laugh a bit about when I say I actually go into the maturing room and listen what the cheese tells me because I, I really feel that's what's about. You have to go in there and use all your senses. You actually have to feel them, touch them, smell them and then the cheese actually tells you something. It will tell you a story on the I think that story tells you if it's happy or unhappy and then you actually have to fine tune it. I think there's still some cheese we can explore and develop and get the people to uh, enjoy it even more. Yeah, so I think there's still a way to go and I think it's a great future. I actually started here uh, when I was 17. I was uh, packing cream. That was my first job here as a school holiday job. I've known Yuli for probably about 10 years uh, here at the dairy. Um, but about five years ago, I really uh, decided that I would uh, take up um, this is my career, being the quality manager here, and I started working with him intensively um, to build my knowledge of the cheese. So I see myself, I guess, as the caretaker of the products that we have here now. We make uh, so many d different cheeses here, and, and what I really uh, learned from Yuli is all the different characteristics. There's just so many different things, um, moisture level, flavour profiles, the seasonability of the milk. When spring milk comes in, we have to change our, our starter cultures and working with the cheese so that we ensure that we're getting the consistent level of cheese out to the consumers each time. The cheese making protein is a, is a lot stronger with the, the richness of the grass and the, the, what we call a spring flush because there's, there's so much abundance of grass and, and the composition does change. Dad picked up work at the dairy while I was still going to school and then after I came back from college, I decided to work back here. I sort of started out just being, just helping out with the packaging and stuff, and then slowly went to work in dairy foods where they make yogurts and stuff like that and help package that out. And then when the chance finally arose, I decided to go cheese making. Well, there's a certain amount of pride that comes from the awards when you found out that the cheese that you made, such as a Stormy or something, has won an award, and you know, you think, yeah, I made that. And it's pretty good. I basically just like farming, I like animals, cows, I was brought up on a farm and I basically uh, just enjoy farming full stop. Well I suppose it, it really is a niche industry here, 16 farms, 
is, is a very small amount of farms to be producing such a well-known product. We think that King Island Dairy have really have developed their products very well. They've got such a great name in the marketplace and, the, and, the, um, and um, we think they're reliable and they're good to work with, so yeah. Well, I always, I always loved the farm. I enjoyed that and I can remember thinking when I was you know, quite young, I, you know, I wanted to be a dairy farmer, but then there came a time later on when I decided differently. It wasn't until uh, I met my wife and that and uh, it really made me keen to want to take over the farm. And, yeah. so I get a bit of a thrill out of the fact that when we go away in the supermarkets we'll see the, the branded product there on the shelf and you know that we know that some of our milk has gone into making that. Yeah, it's quite good. I grew up on a dairy farm. I used to milk cows when I was very young with my parents um, before and after school. So the milk used to go off to King Island Dairy and yeah, so <laughs> I've um, been with King Island Dairy for a long time and yeah, now that they're world famous, it's really good. Yeah, so that's why we wanted to use the cheese to help promote our pies a little bit as well. We make the King Island Camembert cheese spinach and bacon and a King Island Camembert cheese and asparagus and they're, they're very, very popular. My favourite King Island dairy cheese is the Seal Bay Triple Cream. Yeah, it's very nice. A chap from Queensland was here and he said to me, talking about cheese, and he said, what kind of cheese do you like? I said, a bit of Bass Strait Blue on a golden delicious apple wedge. I said, it's fantastic. And he said, oh gee, I must try that. <laughs> well, I always suggest that they try the beautiful cheddar cheese. That's my favorite. Mm. And I like it with apples or dried apricots. Um, also, quince paste is lovely. <laughs> I like to recommend blue cheese, which is sort of an acquired taste for some people, but after a while, I mean, really tasty and um, Stormy is another really good one I find. It's really nice and creamy and just falls apart in your mouth with a really strong taste. Chocolate mousse, is, that's just delicious. I could eat gallons of that stuff. Quite often when I go away, I'll take cheese away and, and give to our friends and, and stuff and, we, and they always love the triple cream and, and uh, the breeze. They, they love all that, probably most. Um, but yeah, so I like it all. I'm, I'm a bit of a champers girl. I do love a um, sparkling wine. Um, so I have a lot of uh, cheese with the lighter cheeses, uh, even up to the wash rind, the stormy with, with champagne. And yeah, it's, I just really enjoy to, ha to have that contrast from um, quite a stinky, smelly cheese to a lighter to the wine. It's something I enjoy, yeah. When you have a nice day, you know, I love sitting on the veranda and just uh, have it with a good beer, you know, like on the, a good piece of cheese and just a piece of lovely bread and a little bit salami or ham with it. And I think it doesn't get much better than just sit on the veranda, look over our paddocks and just enjoy it. And I think that's a great way to eat it. <laughs>